as I was uploading the uh, video to the movie maker, I realized I didn't uh, share with you uh, what uh, Children of Light uh, has reference to uh, Joseph Smith's knowledge of Hebrew. Anybody interested to know that Joseph Smith is a translator? No? You're not interested? Oh, okay, fine. <clears throat> King Vola Discourse. Joseph Smith comes out and says the Hebrew Bible is translated incorrectly. Well, holy crap, that's blasphemy, Joseph. How dare you? Yeah, he died that year <laughs> after saying this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, that's uh, Bereshit Bara Elohim uh, Hashamami, Hashamayim Va'et uh, Ha'eretz. Did I get that right? I forgot the et after uh, Elohim. Et Ha'eretz. No, I Et Hashamim va et haeret va va et haeret ah a little rusty <laughs> that's biblical Hebrew though and according to biblical Hebrew if you have any knowledge of it uh, the uh, Masoretes got together uh, around 800 AD so 500 years after Constantine created Allah and created uh, El and Elohim as a plural magistry as a singular noun he's the one responsible but scholars don't want to admit that, neither do the various religions. How dare you! Blasphemy! Our God is the true God, not that Constantine God. That was a complete creation, even the name, Hamusius. Never before had that Greek word ever been used. He created it, and scholars still to this day battle over what it actually means. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, Joseph Smith uh, was taught by Rabbi Sykes in 1836. Why does he always do it right in front of our building? It's like he's exploding. What the hell? Is that some kind of newfangled thing that the Kearns gang members are using these days? <sighs> anyway, I digress. And so, uh, uh, that's where Joseph Smith talks about in the King Follett Discourse about how uh, a learned uh, Jew had taught him that he was right, Elohim is supposed to be plural, but it would ruin the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if that's what you want to call it. <laughs> it's actually correct the Bible. You know, if you find out the church is bad, you've ruined the church, Travis. Yeah, <laughs> because it's corrupt. <laughs> so, yes, you damn well, Skippy, I ruined it. So, <laughs> and so Joseph Smith uh, then gives a translation, a retranslation of the biblical Hebrew and everybody can't figure it out. How did he do this? This doesn't make any sense. No, there's only one translation because the Masoretes put in those little points and specific vowels that was not in the original script. That was a later edition too. And thus, with those additions in violation of the Deuteronomic Law, where jot and tittle come from, <coughs> the 
Masoretic Jews who violated the Torah fixed the, the translation to one and only one translation. And the King James Version is wrong. All other versions are wrong. Even the church, wrong. Only the Jewish Publication Society is the only one and true translation in English of the Old Testament. It's not a complicated thing because the Jews fixed it. Therefore, if you don't subscribe to the Jewish translation of it, you're wrong. <laughs> and the church won't even correct it to that. They want to keep the worst translation ever. And so, uh, Joseph Smith retranslates it. So he starts with Bereshit, and he is correct. Never did the ancients start with a prepositional phrase. Get the hell out of there, B. Or Baith. And he is correct, it is a word. Even though it's a single letter. Uh, the Jews correctly translate it, even though it's not... They had to create a prepositional phrase to start sentences in order to justify it, as is the Septuagint. But instead of in the beginning, the Jews say it's when the when God began to create. And began is incorrect, because it's a future tense, as I'll get to. <laughs> so yes, even the Jewish Publication Society's translation into English, it's also wrong. <clears throat> and so... Uh, uh, barrel sheet, get rid of the B, you've got row sheet, and he correctly identifies Rosh as head, as in the beginning, uh, or starting, uh, that's fine, <coughs> but uh, uh, if you have heard about me talking about Paleo-Hebrew decipherment, uh, it's got a more fuller translation for it, but I have yet to get it to publishing any of my vocabulary research. And I'm not going to go into here because it would take a long time. And you're bored already, right? And so, uh, he then goes on to say that the sheet... Uh, and you got to be careful not to call it the little white speck on top of bird dung, as we all learned from Pure Country with George Strait. <laughs> he calls it a grammatical termination. He's partly wrong, but we could blame the scribes, uh, because in the actual Joseph Smith history before the church banned it and are now keeping it a secret from us and you have to know where to look in the Joseph Smith papers online unless you're filthy rich and can purchase the whole volume set that they're putting out. <coughs> they, uh, the sh part at the beginning is at the end of Rosh. Rash. So it's just eat that is the grammatical termination. Now this would render the word Rosh as a feminine plural. Well there you go. <laughs> Joseph Smith knows the real source of Trinity, free women. <laughs> Mother in heaven, um, Jesus uh, for the feminine, Krista, <laughs> Jesus of Krista, and uh, the Holy Female Ghost, <laughs> the Mormon Trinity. <laughs> but then you have bara. It's in the present tense because there's no prefix determinative to establish whether it's past or future. 
and you're supposed to even have one for present tense. Oops. Those Jews messed up on that one too. Verbs are identified by a prefix determinative in the vocabulary or in the grammatical structure for sentences. And so uh, for past tense, it's the N. For present tense, it's the Yod or the I. Then <laughs> I got to be careful because. Uh, Yod is the Semitic, whereas in Greek, Paleo Greek, it's the Zeta, thus Yah and Zeus are the same god, which means it's the same language, and therefore Paleo Hebrew is not Semitic. And so we'll just call it I for right now, because we won't go into too detailed of a description for you. And then uh, uh, future tense is the T. Well, there's the T at the end of Rosh. Huh. With no identifier for the verb. Yeah, the T belongs with the verb. Everybody got it wrong. Its head will create or bring forth. And then Elohim. Gods. Huh. So it's not a direct object indicator after all. It's now together with, and uh, we'll just say heavens and earth for right now because we won't get into the details of Paleo Hebrew. And uh, so there you have how Joseph Smith retranslated Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And as you can see, uh, it's far more simpler, didn't need to be complex, <laughs> didn't need to be screwed up with a violation of the Torah, but uh, the children of light, because if you've read your Genesis account, there's the creation of light. Well, we've just altered the complete translation. We just blew it all up. It's splattered guts are everywhere. And so, yes, we've now got to go through and restructure the whole translation. Yes, we just ruined the Bible. <laughs> and so what happens is you have the name of deity. <gasps> what? It's not Elohim? No. It's Yah. What a shocker. The Hebrew God Yah? Who would have thought? <laughs> yes. And instead they decided to use their changed uh, meanings as uh, Matthew uh, butchered the name of Emmanuel. In that same manner, in that same time period, that's when uh, they butchered uh, the the pronoun he or let let us but uh, it's not let us is it that's Joseph Smith's Egyptian version so yeah there's the son of light and the son of darkness son of the day, son of the night. Ties in to children of the light, children of the day. Those two sons are the leaders of those two groups. Uh, there's a, a scene document that scholars are kind of baffled with. And they're not really quite sure what to think of it because they're clueless. Uh, it's uh, something about the sons of light versus the sons of darkness scroll. scroll. And uh, uh, it, it 
seems to them like some kind of apocalyptic, uh, moral, eternal battle type thing. But now I've told you it's all connected together. So there you go. And uh, isn't it amazing? I just showed you how Joseph Smith, without going into specific details, which yes, I can do that too. I can just see it now. No, prove Joseph Smith is a translator, Travis. You can't prove it. Joseph Smith is still a fraud. And I'm Mormon. I'm going to trust Nelson. <laughs> Nelson will lead us and guide us into true translations of Israel. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I butchered that so badly. That was like a, the biggest face plant. <laughs> the president of the church face plants on worldwide general conference. <laughs> How could you butcher it? You are supposed to be the person and you didn't even know, therefore you're not the person. But that's some whole other other videos that I've done for you in explaining that. But yeah, Yah, Prince of God. Right there in the text. <laughs> I just can't believe he messed it. Oh dear God. <laughs> That's what you get for trusting Hebrew scholars at BYU. <laughs> 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 oh, 